Howdy, this is Tubal Kane once again, and I know that I recently promised that I wouldn't present any more videos on electrolysis rust removal, but yet I got one more, and if you don't have any interest, just go ahead and turn it off. But this is a uh, gas tank out of a Vespa motor scooter, which I am starting to rebuild. And if you haven't seen it already, take a look at my uh, two videos called uh, Tubal Kane uh, takes a road trip to buy a Vespa scooter, part one and part two. That's where I acquire this. And this scooter is similar to the one that I had when I was 16 years old. I guess that's why I'm, I'm doing it all. But uh, I have found out there's all kinds of holes in this gas tank. So I need to repair them. But before the, I do, I have to, to get rid of the rust. And it's very rusty inside. As a matter of fact, I don't know if this thing was stored outside or what, but there was probably the equivalent of a quarter cup of rust and rust particles dry that I took out of there. So the bottom of the tank is a mess but the entire inside of the tank also is rusted. Now I told you that I wasn't going to make any more videos on electrolysis but there are the four other ones that I, I made. Most of you have probably seen them and I'm not explaining the details here of how the process works because that was uh, done in the earlier videos and I got quite a few views on that especially the top one there had 40,000 views so there's quite a bit of interest in electrolysis and a lot of people are doing it from uh, with frying pans and just anything you can think of that is rusty and as long as we're on this corrupt earth we suffer with uh, rust and uh, as I have said many times, water is the universal solvent. As I started working on this tank, I took the cock out of the bottom of it, which was not easy to do because it, this isn't threaded. The sheet metal isn't threaded. It uh, uh, was a flange type of deal. It was, uh, I had to get a socket through the, through the front hole here, which wasn't easy. Anyway, I got it out only to find out as I put water in it, I put a cork in there, then I put water in there and it just leaked like a sieve right here as you can see. Well I was going to go ahead and repair that and then I realized if I do, and the way I like to repair them is to use a copper patch and solder it on. But apparently this is very thinned out here. But then I thought well if I do that I have a dissimilar metal in there and then uh, that will be a problem with the electrolysis because that's really meant only for steel. So I've had uh, the uh, electrolysis going here for, for one day, actually, but it's going to take a whole week. Actually, two weeks, because I have to do it a half at a time. This half, and then flip it over and do the other half because of these holes. And just moments ago, I discovered, since the uh, towel down here was all wet, that I have another leak right here. So I made the mistake of lightly wire brushing it, and now it's coming out like crazy, and that's all wet now. There is the possibility that I'll even have to give up on this and fabricate a tank from scratch but the reason I don't want to do that is because the top of the tank and this was made in Italy this is 1955 uh, this is uh, integral with the body that is this forms a, a portion of the top of the scooter right underneath the driver's seat so uh, that's why it's got a little bit of curve and see it's it's tapered so it's kind of a complex piece so I would like to repair it and keep it authentic but another thing I discovered is some moron over the years probably couldn't get the correct top for this so he soldered a new neck on here that would allow him to use basically what amounts to a, an old Chevy radiator cap as the as the gas uh, cover but we also have a hole right here so this piece is, is pretty well rotted. The whole thing is pretty bad. I already have major buyer's remorse on this whole thing, but I only got $300 into it, which is nothing. You know, most people have a buyer's remorse uh, just a week or two after they get married, and they uh, usually, if that's if they bother to get married, and they usually terminate that within a year anyway, so why am I worried about something so simple and insignificant and cheap when men do that with wives and wives do it with husbands? Anyway, that's off topic. Let me show you what I was up to here. 
real briefly, if, if you haven't seen the other videos, electrolysis is the process of using this uh, washing soda here, which is sodium carbonate, with water, along with a battery charger or a power source, and an anode which is stuck in the neck here which I'll pull out in just a second to show you. But what is different about this video than the other ones that I've done is that I used a tank, an open tank, and I was de-rusting parts, you know, something like this, and you could see it being done. In this case, the gas tank is the vessel for the electrolyte, and the anode is stuck into the hole, so it's an internal type of electrolysis rather than external. So that's what's different and that's why I'm bothering to show this. Now we got the positive terminal on the anode here which is stuck in the neck and the negative terminal onto the part itself which is the gas tank. Now don't try this with a gas tank that still has some gas or the odor of gas in it. This thing probably hasn't had gas in it in 20 years and it smelled like rust, not gasoline. So always uh, take care when working on gas tanks. Very dangerous to try to solder them. Now what's this uh, threaded plastic fitting sticking in there, you ask me? Well, that's nothing more than a piece I turned down on the lathe so that this uh, anode would be insulated and not touch the tank itself because then we'd have a short circuit. But let me pull that anode out now and show you what it looks like after having been on there for with the current on it uh, for three or four hours. And the current right now is down to only about one amp. Just barely got a reading. And you need to clean the anode from time to time. I just unplugged the battery charger, so I'll take that positive off. And let's take a look at this anode. And that's how much has accumulated on it within a few hours. And what you see here on this tray is what I have scraped off here in the last day. And you know, again, <laughs> I borrowed this tray from my wife. I think it's a TV tray. We got these for our wedding. I never did like them. That's one ugly floral bouquet on there, so I am uh, desecrating it. So don't tell her. I don't think she'll see the video. But what I like to do is to just take a chisel, old chisel or something, and, and scrape this off. And you can see that it's, it's kind of like a sludge with rust and corruption and I don't know what else. In some ways this sludge uh, improves the appearance of the artwork on this tray, don't you agree? And then I like to wipe it off. It's almost like muddy. And then I'm going to put it back in there and let it go for a few more hours. Now this video will be shot over a period of uh, many days, maybe even a couple weeks. And this is just the second day that I've been doing it. And as uh, Shop Dog Sam would say, and I'm sure he's watching from the first row, that this is a hired hand. You can walk away for a week and a hired hand is working all the time. If you got a good one, that is. Let's take a look at this fitting. That's just a PVC fitting that I, I turned down in the lathe just a little bit so it would be kind of a snug fit and that insulates it. But now you can see that that is a, an old radiator neck or something that somebody put on there. And if we look in here, yeah. not looking good. As you can see, I wish I hadn't aggravated this leak here, but this is quite wet down here now. See the discoloration there in that green cloth? But now I'm going to turn it around. I got the anode back in there. It was just a, a 5 8 rod. I had... Look at it dripping on here now. I actually got to try to get a little pan under here. Oh, I'll use this pan. 
there. See how fast it's coming out. And I'll put the positive back on here. Now watch the needle on the Schumacher here when I plug it in. And I'm plugging it in right now. Wow, oh, didn't get anything. There we go. It's only about one amp. And this is self-regulating. The process will stop when the rust is all gone. Then I'll still have to try to coat the inside of the tank with something, I believe, because it's that bad. Okay, that's all for today, and I will get back uh, periodically on this as I go ahead with other projects. But I'm leaking like crazy. And I may have to stop at some point, empty it, and make temporary uh, repairs to that tank so that I can f uh, fill it with water. Um, that's going to be a problem. I wasn't expecting that. Good morning. It is now the second day of this little project. And it's 7 in the morning. I got a little more light on the subject, so... Maybe that'll help a little bit. You know, I noticed that some of these guys that are making shop videos make no effort whatsoever for lighting. And uh, you got to have lots of light. You know, in Hollywood, they spend hours and days sometimes on getting the lighting right, even when they're outdoors. So it is most critical that you have some light. And I don't claim to be an expert, but I do know the pretty much the more light I can get, the better. So let's take a look at this. I digressed just a little bit there, didn't I? Pull this out and see how much accumulated over the night. Because, but the water level has uh, greatly decreased because of the leak I got now. So you can see that's where the water level is. I really need an electrode with a bend on it that'll go way down in there. The more electrodes, the better. But you know there isn't room to get them in this little hole here. So I just I just got one. But <clears throat> that's what we got overnight. And uh, what I think I'm going to do now, I want to be gone for a couple days, and I don't dare leave this on while I'm gone. I probably would be all right, but I just don't think it's a good practice. But I'm going to rotate this uh, 90 degrees and do this for a couple days, rotate it another 90, and so on until I got the full 360. Uh, and I still won't have it all because of the, uh, the holes in the darn thing. So... I'm going to scrape that off now. And that's what I've got so far on a beautiful picture. What I might also do on this project, and I have done it on other projects and much larger gas tanks, is to uh, uh, tumble them. That is, I need to make a fixture of some kind to hold something that is so irregular as this, and then I put about a pound of drywall nails in there and uh, let it tumble for hours. But this thing is so thin on the bottom, it's like uh, French lace. Make that Norwegian lace. that I'm afraid I'll go through it. But I have tumbled a, a, quite a large gas tank, a 10 or 12 one, out of my Ford tractor. And uh, that, that worked pretty good, uh, very noisy. But uh, it, it certainly knocks everything uh, loose. But there is always some rust left. There are coatings for the inside of the tank that you can buy. I haven't used it. I've heard both good and bad about them. So I'll see you in a few days. I'm going to take a little trip, but it's not a road trip. It's a family trip. Well, it's a road trip with a family, with the family, but uh, not something that I will film in one of my road trip videos. So, uh, so long for a few days. 
Well, I'm back from a short trip, and I got home last night, so I hooked this back up here. I rotated the tank 90 degrees. Look at everything is wet. This is really like trying to repair a sieve. But I've had this on overnight, and I'm not repeating any of my safety warnings because those were all in uh, one of the other videos, several of the other videos, but uh, that's what I got overnight. I'll scrape that off. That's what I got so far after it kind of dried out. It looked a little different when it was wet. But, uh, you know, it's really hard to work on something that's 55 years old and, uh, and uh, many morons have modified it or worked on it over the years too. And you always run into problems. And if any of you guys have done any kind of restoration work or worked on real old stuff, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, I don't know, this might even be a lost cause, although I haven't given up yet. But I did have this in stock. This is a plastic gas tank. I don't know where I got it. But it does happen to fit the hole in the Vespa. I should take the camera out there, maybe I'll do that later, and show you where this gas tank goes. And uh, this could at least be a temporary one while I look for another one or make one or finally do get this one uh, rust free and usable but uh, this is going to be slow going and I think I've got another idea how to uh, work on this because uh, the problem with this is that now there is only about one third uh, the amount of fluid in there, electrolyte because it's leaking from every possible place you can think of and everything's wet and this this towel is wet and there's water on the floor so it's you know it's coming out and uh, I need to have another little approach for this and, I, and I've been thinking about something and I'll I'll get back to you here in a little while 